Hello everybody and welcome to the second problem in module 12-3. Once again, we're looking at a problem where we're determining whether or not our data fits some particular multinomial distribution. So once more, this type of problem is very, very similar in the way that it is performed compared to many of the previous problems in module 12. Here we're going to be looking at our observed frequency of some event occurring, and we compare it to what we expect that frequency to be in a world where the null hypothesis is true. And if we find that the frequencies that we observe are very similar to the frequencies that we expect to see if the null is true, well then of course the difference between those two values is small, and that gives rise to a small test statistic, and that supports the null hypotheses. If the differences between what we observe and what we expect to observe, if those differences are large, well then that gives rise to a large test statistic, and that supports the alternative hypotheses. So let's get into this problem, and you'll see what I mean, both in terms of how the test is performed and the similarities with others that we have done. As part of a research project for your statistics class, you decide to gather data on your classmates' favorite candy to determine if there is a statistically significant difference in their preferences. So here we have a, a set of frequencies that begin with the assumption that between these three types of candy, chocolate bar, hard candy, and gummies, the fact that here we have all equal shares, that is starting with an assumption that there's no difference in preferences, that all of my classmates have the identical preferences across these three different types of candy. Then we do a survey and we ask, which one do you prefer? So what we are going to be doing first, we'll formulate our null and alternative hypotheses, and then we will have to calculate our expected frequencies, those values that we would expect to see if the null were true. So our null hypothesis is that the shares are all the same that the proportion of those who like chocolate bar is equal to hard candy, equal to gummies, and they're all equal to 0.33. So the null hypothesis is that this follows a multi multinomial distribution with all, all proportions equal to 0.33. The alternative hypothesis is simply that not all proportions are equal to 0.33. So we start off by calculating our expected frequencies. If the null is true, what would we expect to see? Well, we would expect all of those values to be equal to 0.33. So if I look at our observed frequency, what would I expect to see? Well, I surveyed 200 people. I would expect, if the null hypothesis is true, I would expect 66 people would have preferred the chocolate bar. Now, because these proportions in the null hypotheses are all the same, that observed value is going to be the same for all of them. I would expect a third of 200. I would expect 66 would prefer the hard candy. I would expect 66 would prefer the gummies. These values are consistent with a belief or an expectation that their preferences are all the same, and they're all equal to 0.33. So we have our expected frequency. Now we need to calculate our chi-square. This is again comparing our observed frequency with our expected frequency. 
what we see, what we would expect to see if the null is true. We square it, divide by that expected value, and add those up. It's a nearly identical test statistic to what we've been working with in previous problems. So let's get started here. We've only got a couple of calculations this time. We calculate those differences, we square them, we divide by that expected value, and then I will add these up, and down here we'll have our chi-squared test statistic. So let's get going the first one. So I'm just looking at these differences, right, between what we observe, what we would expect to observe. So 80 minus 66 squared divided by what we expect, which for all of them is 66, and that gives me 2.97. Now I'm comparing these two values, 50 minus 66, 16, 16 squared, divide by 66, and finally the next one, 70 minus 66 squared, divided by 66, and now I add those up. And that gives me my test statistic of 7.09. So what do we do with 7.09? Same as all of the other problems. Now we have our test statistic. Now we need to know what variant of the chi-square distribution are we using? What are our degrees of freedom? So as you might expect, k minus 1, where k is the number of categories again, and so here we have 3 minus 1, I have just 2 degrees of freedom. Here we're doing this test at the O5 level of significance. So let's scroll down to our distribution. I have 2 degrees of freedom. There's my alpha. There's my critical value. Five point nine nine one that defines that reject and that do not reject. Our test statistic was seven, just over seven, seven point oh nine. So we're just between these two values, which means my relevant probability is going to be between these two. So again, if I have my test statistic here. Well, certainly, if this region here is equal to 0.05, well, this region here that corresponds with my test statistic is certainly something less than 0.05. So, we find consistent results again, as we always should, using the critical value approach and the p-value approach that we can reject the null hypotheses. I have a p-value that is less than 0.05, greater than 0.025. We have sufficient evidence here to reject the null hypotheses, which means not all of those candies are equally preferred among my classmates. There's definitely some difference here. So we can fairly easily do a quick little bar chart and compare these proportions. So once more, if we calculate our point estimates, and so here I'm going to say for those who said they preferred the chocolate bar, that was 80 out of 200. So that was 40% said they preferred the chocolate bar. 50 out of 200, well that's 
and 70 out of 200, that was 35%. So now I can just compare those probabilities. And again, we can do it numerically, just looking at that table, comparing our prior belief to what we now actually observe. So here again, I'm just going to clean out some space here. Don't need much. So our, our prior assumption is that all of them are equally preferred. So here I have, they're all equally preferred, a third, a third, and one third. So there's our chocolate bar, hard candy, and gummies. What do we observe? Well, we certainly observe the chocolate bar is actually more preferred. The hard candy is actually less preferred. And the gummies, oh, that's pretty close to what we expected. So here now I can see visually, I can see graphically, not perfectly precise, but again, just to give us some idea of what that actual distribution of preferences is. I can see the chocolate bars are definitely the most preferred, and then the gummies and then the hard candies are the least preferred among the three. Okay, that's it everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. That's it for module 12-3. Next set is gonna be 12-4, and this is where we get into more goodness of fit tests and this time we'll be looking at normal distributions as opposed to the multinomial distribution. Okay, thanks for watching everybody.